Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is using liquid transformations in Azure Logic App Standard. Let's go. Let's talk a little bit about why this is important. So whenever we expose an interface through Logic Apps, we may want to reshape or reduce the message payload that we want to send back. And Azure Logic Apps has consumption the consumption SKU has support for data transformations for quite a while, thanks to the use of an integration account. Um, however, when we talk about Azure Logic Apps standard, we don't require an integration account, and we can go ahead and call upon transformations, including Liquid, directly in the standard service itself. And so what this means is all we have to do is go ahead and upload our Liquid file from within our VS Code project, or we can upload it directly into the portal. And so the scenario that we're going to talk about today is we're going to go ahead and reach out to Microsoft Dataverse and, and receive a, a large payload. But we want to trim that payload down. And uh, as a result, we can use Liquid to go ahead and help us out with that. And so this is what I'm referring to here. Uh, what we see here is on the source. This it represents a Dataverse table. And this becomes particularly um, interesting when we talk about Logic Apps and Dataverse. Uh, the Dataverse connector that's currently in Logic Apps is known inside of Power Automate as the legacy version. And as a result, we don't have the ability to restrict what fields we want to include. Now, as you can see, we also have like the uh, publisher prefix that shows up in some of the custom fields like this cred1 name, cred1 email address. And we just want to get it to a place where it's just cleaner, right? If we look at the two, you know, which would you re prefer to go ahead and consume if you were, uh, you know, building an interface to consume this particular data? And so this is what Liquid's going to help us do. It's going to allow us to transform from this source message down into something that's cleaner and a little bit more easy to digest itself. And so what does this look like? So Liquid itself is comes out of Shopify, the uh, online e-commerce giant. And what they've done is they've built this way to be able to transform you know, messages, and in this case, JSON itself. And so if we go ahead and take a look at our source message here, we can see that we've got an array of values. And then within these arrays, we've got some fields that we're interested in, like this partner ID, this account ID, the name, the email address, as some examples. And so what we can do is we can go ahead and essentially construct, uh, it's almost like an XSLT document in some ways, where we can go ahead and basically model out what we would want the output to look like. And then we've got some ability to do what I would call scripting in order to access that information. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create essentially an array of accounts. Now for each account, and this is something that we declare, in the content dot value. So here what we're going to do is loop through this value array and then we're going to access the information within that record itself. And so here I've gone ahead and created my own column names or attribute names and then I can refer to this payload using this syntax. So I've, def I've identified account here so I can go account dot cred one underscore ke weir dot underscore account ID, right? So what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and pick off this value for it and assign it to account ID. So I can do something similar for partner ID. I'm going to go get account dot cred one underscore partner ID and so on and so forth. And what we're going to see is when this is finished executing, we're going to have that clean document that I showed you on the previous slide. Now, once I've gone ahead and created this file, I've, you know, I did that in a text editor that was VS Code. It could be anything. It could be Notepad++ if you wanted. Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and upload it to the Azure portal. And so when I'm in a standard Logic App, I can go ahead and click on Maps, which is in the Artifacts section, and then just go ahead and upload that specific Liquid file that I just showed you. If you're using VS Code, what you're going to see is there will be an artifacts folder um, in your project structure and you can then go ahead and add your map to that subfolder. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's go run a demo and we can go ahead and see 
uh, the output of this specific interface. Okay, so here's my liquid file. I already explained it in the slide, so I won't go into a whole lot more detail here. But what I want to do is just know where this is sitting on my specific disk, and then I'll go ahead and upload it. As I mentioned before, if I'm in a Visual Studio VS Code project, rather, uh, the maps and the schemas folders get automatically created for me. I just went ahead and added my liquid file to that specific folder itself. And now I'm over in the Azure portal and within the Azure portal itself, um, if I go to my standard SKU version of my Logic App, I will then find maps. I can go ahead and just upload it and then be able to use it inside of my project. So let's go ahead, let's open up our workflow here. And so I'm gonna open up customers now within this specific uh, logic app, um, it is stateless. Uh, I do have debug mode that is currently enabled, um, just so that we can go ahead and see this uh, in production. You know, I would go ahead and disable it once I knew I was happy with everything. But let's go into the designer, and what we're going to do here is just expose an HTTP trigger, uh, which isn't overly sort of crazy. Um, I've flipped the method to use a GET. And what we're gonna do is just retrieve all accounts from Dataverse, um, and I've got a custom accounts table. And I basically just want to uh, get any accounts that are active. So I've just got a little bit of a, an expression here. Um, if, you know, a state of zero or one, one being active. If it's not included, um, we're going to just go ahead and add it, uh, the one, so that we'll, we'll only get the active records. Next, what we're going to do is drag our transform JSON to JSON action. And this is what's going to allow us to go ahead and call our liquid template. So what we've got here is a drop down. And because we had uploaded this liquid file previously in the Azure portal, it shows up here. And then what naturally we need to pass in a source input. And the source input is really going to be our list of items, basically that array of records that I showed you uh, previously in the slide. Now what's going to happen is we're going to have output and this is going to be the transformed content from our liquid transformation itself. At this point we can go ahead and save it and now we can go ahead and test it and call it from Postman. Okay so I'm in Postman, I've copied my URL from my logic app, I've changed my method to be a get now I can just go ahead and click on send and we will see our results sent back and it is much cleaner um, than what we would have received otherwise. Let's just flip back to the Azure portal just to go ahead and see what that would look like in the run history. So since I've got debug mode enabled, I can go ahead and check this out. And if we go ahead and list rows and then check out the raw outputs, we can see that we've got this payload which has a lot of additional information that we just don't need itself. And so that's where the beauty of this transformation, you know, we can see the input was passed to the liquid transformation and then the output, and the output is obviously much cleaner from that perspective. All right, so thanks for checking out another video on the channel. Hope you found this beneficial. Uh, go ahead and check out more liquid transformations to see what you can do with them. Uh, obviously, you're on the YouTube channel already, so likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome. Otherwise, go ahead, find me on Twitter. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon on the channel. Take care.